Nasty in here with me. This ain't a diss song, but um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheesehead, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring, that's nothing. Yeah. Pull up in your town when you see me, you know everything. Green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow. Yeah. I put it down, representing for my team. I'm in green. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Packers Unscripted from Packers.com. I am Mike Spofford. He is the one and only Wes Hodkowitz. We're coming to you here from our studios at Lambeau Field. Not long after the plane landed from Kansas City, Wes, Sunday night football, Arrowhead Stadium, the Packers get win number seven. They are 7-1, and 31-24 is the final score. I don't know where you want to start with this one because there is plenty – to dissect and talk about here, but I think we have to start with number 33, Aaron Jones. What a performance. I think you have to, right? And here's what was amazing about this performance from Aaron Jones. We talked all offseason. How is Matt LaFleur going to use all these running backs? How is he going to you know, get them involved in the passing game out of the backfield? Aaron Jones was practically a receiver in this game with how much they flanked him out wide and and that was a decoy that the Packers have used in the past, but very rarely would the ball be the, you know, would that receiver be, that running back be the first or second read for Aaron Rodgers. These plays were designed for Aaron Jones, and he made Kansas City pay. I really thought it was funny. You know, early on he has that 60-yard touchdown that ends up getting brought back 10 yards because he, they ruled that he stepped out of bounds, even though, you know, there really wasn't anybody by him. He kind of out-sprinted everybody, but his toe just touches the, the white chalk. Yeah. He went back to the sideline and he told Aaron Rodgers, I owe you another one. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, here we are. Uh, that uh, a fiery, explosive uh, third quarter from Green Bay to pull themselves back into this, and then they come out in the fourth quarter and they carry that momentum. He gets the 67-yard touchdown, seven catches, a career-high 159 yards of, of receiving 226 yards of total offense. Both he and Jamal Williams were responsible for all four Packers touchdowns. Can't say enough about the performance of those two running backs. Yeah, and Aaron Jones now with 11 total touchdowns on the season at the midway point. Um, a note to watch here, the Packers' single-season record is 20 touchdowns. Really? Amon Green in 2003. So wow. Aaron Jones on pace when you look at the math halfway That's to incredible. potentially getting that record. He has eight rushing touchdowns, now three receiving touchdowns, and as you said, could have had another one last night if not for the foot just barely hitting the sideline there that uh, the replay review caught. But I tell you, Wes, the explosiveness of this young man is its really amazing. And, yes, he got some great blocks and everything else, but um, – but boy, he's he's just an electric player on the field. We talked all week last week about Tyreek Hill and Mecole Hardman and these guys that the Kansas City Chiefs have, and they certainly lived up to their billing as well, even with backup quarterback Matt Moore, who put on a very right. solid performance, and the Chiefs gave the Packers absolutely everything they could handle in this game. But Aaron Jones takes a backseat to no one in the NFL right now. He is he is dynamic. He is on the field every down. He is a, he is a three down back. Whether you need him to protect Aaron Rodgers, whether you need him to run the ball from the two yard line with five minutes to go, whether you want to flank him out and get him in a matchup to uh, against a linebacker to see if you can get an explosive play, he's just doing everything for this offense right now. At a time over the last month when the Packers have absolutely needed it with Devontae Adams missing his fourth straight game, and lo and behold, the Packers are 4-0 and without their Pro Bowl wide receiver. Well, one of the things I thought was really interesting, that you know, a little small factoid I dug up, the fact that Jones and Williams in these four games together, and mind you, Jamal Williams didn't play in one of those. Uh, they've combined for 754 total yards, 11 touchdowns. The first four to start the season, 412 yards and five touchdowns. I mean, both of those guys have you know, taken their game to another level. But here's the thing, Mike. We talked about it from the very beginning. 
when they didn't have Devontae Adams and they're working through some of these things offensively that they need to get through, who are your next biggest playmakers? You can make an argument that Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams are those next guys. And when the, the moment is called for it, both of them have you know kind of risen to the occasion. But at the end of the day, the thing we're starting to learn you know, halfway through this regular season now, Aaron Jones isn't just a really good running back. He's becoming one of the more explosive players in this entire league yep. when you get him the ball in open space. And I thought you brought up a good point a moment ago when you talk about Hardman, when you talk about Hill, when you talk about Watkins and how dangerous they can be in the open field. Aaron Jones was the counter to that. Yep. And you saw when, you know, if you get him out in space and there's no tacklers around him, his explosiveness and his top end speed, I don't know, to be honest with you, and I think it was Vic Fangio that said this a month ago. How this guy ever went in the fifth round is just beyond me. <laughs> uh, he's just, he's such a dynamic football player. And, you know, for the first time in his career, he's winning. He didn't win a lot at UTEP. He no. didn't win a lot his first two years in Green Bay. But here the Packers are at 7-1, and one, and they got a player like this who, mind you, gutted through a shoulder injury that momentarily took him out of the game. He came back, didn't look any worse for wear. And I'm sure you're going to talk about this too, but when the Packers needed to run the ball too, in the four-minute offense late to kill the last 504 off the clock, he did that as well. He got them two first downs, 29 rushing yards, and allowed the Packers to kneel out the ball after an eight-yard out route on third and five. The confidence that Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers showed in that young man, it's just incredible what he's put together here the last month. Yeah, well, and then you look at the rest of what was going on on offense. Obviously, 226 yards from scrimmage from Aaron Jones and a couple of touchdowns. You mentioned Jamal Williams. Aaron Rodgers, by the way, Puts up 120 plus passer rating, three another 300 yard game, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Yes, he got sacked a handful of times. The, the Chiefs definitely gave uh, the Packers some issues with their pressure packages. But again, Aaron Rodgers executes a game plan, doesn't really ever put the ball in danger of being turned over. Um, all of these things that you come to just expect from Aaron Rodgers, and obviously you don't want to take it for granted, but. Um, but boy, that touchdown pass to Jamal Williams, I don't know. I don't know what you thought. We're sitting next to each other in the press box. I yeah. don't know what you thought at the moment. I didn't even see Jamal Williams in the back of the end zone. I'm, my eyes are on Rodgers and on Jimmy Graham. And as soon as the ball left Rodgers' hand, I'm like, oh, he, he just he threw it over his head on purpose. It's going out of bounds. They're going to kick the field goal and, and take a three-point lead. And Jamal Williams is streaking across the back of the end zone and makes a diving catch by the by the back pylon. And sure enough, you ask Aaron Rodgers after the game, yeah, he saw him. Yeah, he, of course he, he did. He did. He did see him. Like I, I, I'm just I'm I'm blown away by the, the stuff we are seeing on a weekly basis from this Packers offense. And that touchdown pass, I don't know how to rank him anymore, Wes. But that touchdown pass is is one that's somewhere on a list for me I, I still for this as far as this season is concerned that touchdown he had where he threw it into Aaron Jones through like triple coverage in the end zone a couple weeks ago that's still the that's the top one <laughs> in terms of just the overall skill level and the narrow window he had some room to work with because he was near the sideline but let's be honest Mike the Packers needed to make plays in that second half and Aaron Rodgers did just that yeah uh, to to find a way on that particular play you got to remember they're sitting there I believe it was third and one at that point. I think you and I were both anticipating, okay, is this where you run it and then see if you get the first down? If you don't, go for it. Well, then they end up coming out in an empty set, which if you go by the you know the statistics on the night, I don't know how it all ended up shuffling out, but that ended up being one of their better packages when they were able to take the inside linebacker out of the equation and make sure that they had to make a decision with how they were defending the running back. Out well, wide. and that one was with all of your run offensive personnel right. on the field. So from a personnel standpoint, you're thinking the Packers are going to run the ball, right. but then they spread it out and go empty, and then it's like, okay, well, what's coming now? I mean, exactly. it was it, I was I was stunned by what was going on, and then even more stunned by the uh, the touchdown catch that ended the ended the drive. It was a big shift, and it was funny listening to you know Jimmy Graham tell it. And, you know, he's thinking he's boxing out the safety or the cornerback there. He thought the ball was going to come for him, and the way Rogers described it in his post game news conference was that he wanted to put it in an area that if Jimmy could go up and get it, it's there. But if it isn't, he saw that body, whoever it was, and it turned out <laughs> being Jamal Williams, in the back, that, that white jersey that could potentially help him out as well. And for Williams to show the urgency, to, and as you pointed out when we were discussing this earlier, Kansas City did everything right. The cornerback switched. Jones is covered. 
Graham is relatively covered as much as you can cover a six foot seven guy that's right. boxing you out. Right. But for Jones to stay with the play, curl to the back of the end zone, try to find a way to you know find some open space and then make that catch along the sideline, was absolutely critical for the Packers to capitalize there and keep the momentum in their favor. And Jones, I mean, Williams, I mean, people aren't going to talk a lot about him because of just all the stats that Aaron Jones put up in this game. But Jamal Williams, for what he was asked to do in this contest, including the one-yard touchdown run early on behind Danny Vitale, he was also a very critical part of what the Packers were able to do in Kansas City. Yeah, well, you used the word momentum, and I want to get back to that thought in a second. But I don't want to forget about this either. Select Cousin Subs locations are now offering delivery. Whether you're ordering, catering, or your favorite sub, they're delivering right to you when you order online at CousinSubs.com. Cousin Subs, we believe in better. All right, Wes, you said it, momentum. It was a game of momentum shift, certainly, really from the beginning of the game all the way to the end. The Packers jump out 14-0 in the first quarter. The Chiefs come back with an explosive second quarter. They score 17 points. The Packers, fortunately, hold them to a field goal on that final drive before halftime. So the Packers are down 17-14 at the half. Green Bay puts together a long third quarter drive that takes more than eight and a half minutes off the clock, but Packers have to settle for a field goal. Aaron Rodgers talked about his helmet communicator going out, which partly led to the delay of game and the goal to go, and then also the timeout they had to use right. before the third down play. But anyway, so the Packers get the field goal that ties it, and then first play of the Chiefs' next drive Tyler Lancaster, the undrafted second-year defensive lineman from Northwestern, makes the biggest play by far of his young career. He strips Shady McCoy and gets the fumble recovery at the 27-yard line, sets up the Packers for the go-ahead touchdown, which turned out to be then that f fabulous TD catch by Williams. Yeah, and it was really interesting talking to some of the guys in the locker room. Lancaster was certainly very humble and excited that he was able to make the play. As he said, you know, the way he was describing it, you know, when he's basically filling the A gap and when McCoy makes the decision to cut into the B gap, Lancaster has one play at that point, and it's basically to stick his arm out there and see if he could find the football, which he did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, much to his surprise, the ball ended up bouncing directly, you know, into his gut, basically. And yeah. He while he's laying on the ground, while all he's of a sudden, the there, there it is. Yeah. So he gets his a fumble recovery. He said it kind of reminded him of a play at Northwestern, very similar, where he's doing his job inside. He punches the ball out, ends up getting brought back for a touchdown. Uh, but again, one of those just I don't you call them kind of happy ab accidents, right? That right. was the, uh, you know, the old phrase and and. For him to come up in that moment, I was asking Preston Smith about this afterwards. You know, you can make all you want about Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, Jair Alexander, Adrian Amos. I mean, all the name type players on this defense. If you want to be a team that can win in the postseason, you need to have the Tyler Lancasters of the world making a play here and there at a critical point in the game. Zadarius even mentioned, you know, when he went back to the sideline, Packers, they got punched in the mouth in the second quarter. Yeah. It did not go the way they wanted to. They came out great. I think the first seven plays or six plays, Kansas City only mounted seven yards of total offense, but they started to find those weapons underneath in the second quarter, and those weapons made guys miss. They were able to put up a ton of yards. And Zadarius said, you know, this was kind of the thought in the locker room is that this is our time. We have to prove that we can, you know, not break in this moment. We can come back together. I thought a really underrated play was the fact that Jair Alexander finally stuffing Watkins for a two-yard loss on what that little receiver screen they kept burning the Packers for in the second quarter. Yeah, one of those funky X and O scheme things, and, and Alexander was very quick to react to it. And I thought that, I agree with you, I thought that was another play that showed the Packers' defense, which had its issues and there were missed tackles, and, and you, know, you knew these playmakers for the Chiefs were going to be able to do some things. But I thought that was a play where the Packers' defense kind of started to stand tall and yeah. get a little bit of that mojo back again. Yeah, and I mean, for Alexander, just shot out of a cannon to make that play, and then that's what sets up Zedaria Smith in getting the third down sack. And as cool as that was for Green Bay to get a stop out of the break,
Oh yeah. Young Moolah, baby.